YouTube. Alright guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a fully undetectable file binder and how to make a stub for it. Okay, so let's get started. So if you don't know what file binder is, it basically binds multiple files together into one application. So if you want to bind two exe files or two picture files or two text files, you can do this with this program. Okay, so let's get started by clicking on new project. I'll quickly rename this to file binder tutorial. Okay, so once the form has finished loading, what you're gonna do is place three buttons and two text box on the form. Okay, so we're gonna do that now. Okay, and two text box. And the two text box is actually for getting the file names of the two files that you wanna buy. Okay, so that's text box two keep it down here okay I'm gonna quickly rearrange them into the correct order okay so I've done a few changes in my form so I've changed the button names and also I've changed the position of those buttons and I put some colors at the back so by FUD I mean fully undetectable file binder okay so the button one is called button underscore file one and the button two is called button underscore file two and the bind button is called button underscore bind and the text box is just text box 1 and text box 2 okay so I'm gonna show you the codes for the first file 1 which is actually just to get the file name and also the save file name which is the actual name of the file okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna dim OFD as new open file dialog and then we can just go with OFD dot file name you can give it any thing you want. I'm going to let the user choose what name they want to choose and we can go to title equals choose a file dot filter equals all files star dot star straight slash star dot star close brackets and then dot initial directory equals we need to get the initial directory to the desktop so you're going to go environment dot get folder part environment dot special folders dot desktop okay and then we go if dot show dialog so we're going to check if the dialog result is okay um, yeah the main thing that I'm going to show you now is actually the two functions and also the variable name that we need to use to store our two save file names from textbox1 and textbox2. The two functions that I'm going to show you are very important for the program and you will need that to encrypt and decrypt the file 1 and file 2. Okay, so so the first we want to declare two variables in which we want to store our two save file name and then the two functions is secure and insecure we just go by well data as byte as byte and then using sa as new so we're creating an object of that class raj and system dot security dot cryptography dot raj and managed RNG and it managed is a class and it has many methods in it which I'm going to use two of them so which is SA dot IV which is the initialization vector and we go new byte and in the curly brackets we type in the initialization vector so we're going to start off by this goes to 9 and then we're going to start from 1 again goes till 7 this time that's our initialization vector so we can create the sa dot key which is the secret key remember that the function secure and all those keys and initialization vectors should match exactly with the decryptor which is the unsecure function which I'm going to make after this one so you can't change the keys and the initialization vector in that so for the key you need to type in 7 from opposite of initialization vector so we go 7654321 comma 9 
eight seven six five four three two one and that's our key so we go return s8 dot create encryptor dot transform final block data comma zero comma data dot length so it encrypts the whole length of the file okay so once we create our function secure we can just copy and paste this for our unsecure function just type in unsecure here and instead of create encryptor we're going to create decryptor this time or create decryptor and the rest should be fine okay so now we have the two string variables um, in which we're going to store the save file name and also we have two functions which will be used for decrypting and encrypting the two files we can get back to our code okay so the f will store the save file name of our first file so we're going to go dim save file name and the actual text box will store the file name the file name and once we're done with our first button we can just basically copy and paste the same code it's going to be the same exactly but we're just going to make a few changes in it so once we copy that we just want to change the f to f2 and also the text box 1 to text box 2 and that should be fine okay and then in the button 3 what are we going to do Button 3 will actually bind the two files, so we need to dim a save file dialog as new save file dialog. And then again with sfg dot file name equals star dot star dot title equals choose an output directory or folder. I'm just going to do folder dot filter equals all files and the same filter goes here okay, so for initial directory once again we need to set the initial directory to desktop so we're going to go environment dot get folder part and then in the brackets we type in environment dot special folder desktop and then we go if dot show dialog equals okay okay so here comes the good part this is actual the codes which are important for binding the file okay so first we need to declare a split string so we're gonna give it a string of say I'm just gonna give it a splitter you can actually have anything instead of splitter but you need to make sure that whatever the split string that you use over here should match exactly in the stub. Okay, so once you get your split string, what you're going to do is create a buffer, dim buffer as byte, and this will hold our stub. So it's going to go in the resources folder. We haven't made our stub yet, so it's going to be underlined. Don't worry about it right now. Once you make our stub, we're going to include it in here. And now we need to write the stub the buffer into the file itself so we're going to go my.computer.filesystem.writeallbytes.filename comma and then the buffer comma yes you want to overwrite it okay so once we write the buffer to the file what we're going to do is we're going to read all the bytes of the two files that we have in our text box 1 and text box 2 and we're going to encrypt them. How we're going to do that is by going dim file one as byte equals secure my or computer dot file system dot read all bytes, and then the brackets we're just going to type in text box one dot text, and we're going to do the same thing for the second file. Textbox 2.txt 
Okay, so once we got the bytes from the two files and we encrypted them, what you're gonna do is save everything into the file that we created. So what you, how we're gonna do that is go system dot io dot file dot append all text and then dot file name comma and then we're gonna split and convert dot to base sixty four string file one. Okay, so what does the two base sixty four string does is actually convert the eight eight bit array of the unsigned integers into the equivalent string of the file one to its base sixty four string. So we're gonna do we're gonna split it again, and this time we're gonna type in the save file name variable that we created before, and then we're gonna split again. So you need to be very careful while splitting. You need to split each and every element of it. So we first we split it the base64 string of the file one, and then we split it the save file name of the file one, and now we're converting. So we can convert dot two base64 string the file two, and then we're gonna split that again with the save file name of the file too and this is it okay once you've done that you can just let the user know that everything was successful if not then they get error message so in the message box we need to type in successfully binded or whatever message you want to let the user know that it was successful comma message box style dot information Plus message box style dot OK only comma success as our title for the message box. Okay, so if anything goes wrong while binding, we can let the user know by putting the try catch statement. We're gonna cut this code over here and paste it between try and catch. And then in the catch, we can just type in the message box saying errors occurred and then and ex.message so whatever the error that was the it will let the user know comma message box style dot critical comma in the quotations we just type in error as the title for the message box okay so all this is a very advanced file binder code and the second part of this video I'll show you how to make a stub for it which will actually hold the code of which file to run first and we'll decrypt the file bytes of this file binder into the stub and we'll choose which file we need to run first okay thanks guys for watching this video I hope you will rate comment and subscribe cheers bye bye